So in this podcast, I'm going to talk about the painting The Mocking of Christ by the artist, artist Matthias Grunewald. Um, all right, so this, this painting is presumed to have been done um, in around the year 1505, but we don't know that for sure. Not a lot is known about Matthias Grunewald. Uh, in fact, that's not even his real name. Um, his real name was Mathis Gotthard, and he was called Nithard, Nithard um, in, in shorthand. Um, this painting, Mocking of Christ, um, was found in the property of a Carmelite uh, monastery in Munich in 1803, and it still is um, can, can be seen in Munich today. We see Christ clad in a pale blue robe, seated on a stone in the lower left corner, blindfolded with a white cloth, and a very large fellow is about to slug him with his fist. There is another guy who is lean and waiting to smack him with the knotted end of a rope. Um, so what, what, what are we looking at in this painting? I think, you know, for at least for me, my eyes are immediately drawn to this fat-faced ruffian and his inbred features. But also we might notice the tranquil face of Christ. He is suffering, but he seems relatively unfazed in his suffering, at least psychologically unfazed. I see a person who felt the last hit, yet fears not the next. Uh, the next thing I notice when I look at this is the crooked fist, um, the, the bent fist of this massive person who is about to, about to club him. Um, and I see that as a fist that is bent from previous blows. And this is such a stupidly strong individual, so caught up in the viciousness of this act that perhaps he doesn't even uh, uh, feel or comprehend the damage that perhaps he's doing to his fist. And then look in the foreground, look at the agile athletic posture of this lean, lithe torturer. I mean, we can imagine from looking at him the swift, accurate efficiency of the whipping strike that he prepares for the Savior, no doubt aimed at the sensitive parts of his face. And we fear this second blow more than the blunt fist that will hit the back of Christ's head. But most of all, I recognize the broad-skulled imbecility of the servile bureaucrat who with minimal movement indicates a kind of sociopathic deafness to the plea for mercy that he is overhearing. And with eyes that are aloof and not focused on the violence, he is willfully ignorant of what is taking place right in front of him. I look at this guy's face and it looks like it's part human, part lizard, part rock. And do we not recognize this person? Do we not all kind of know this, the, the dim-eyed dunce, perhaps a, a 16th century Roger Goodell? We knew this man, uh, perhaps in administration in our high schools, or the stone-faced cop who pulled you over one day, or he could even pass for a probate judge in Massachusetts, a middle management type of the Department of Children and Families. We've all seen the nitwitted, barrel-chested automaton with his burgeoning, well-fed cretin frame stretching the vestments of his office. And I myself enjoy imagining a sequential plot to this painting in which this little lithe torturer sees the error of his ways, is personally wronged by the rock lizard, and through an arduous tale of penitence and revenge, he ultimately wraps a garrote around this thick neck and chokes him behind a desk, the site of a career in administrative brinkmanship. The black background seems to anticipate people like Rembrandt and Caravaggio, even though I don't think you would call this a chiaroscuro. It certainly seems to accomplish what Caravaggio set out to accomplish with the use of a chiaroscuro, and that is to put the violence right in our face. The fact that you can draw a horizontal line across the heads of these uh, onlookers um, emphasizes their elevation over the spectacle, and to me that grants a kind of gladiatorial element to the violence that is taking place. So, great painting, underrated Northern Renaissance artist, and it is still not as, in, as ingenious as what he did at the Isenheim altar, which is 
stunningly uh, beautiful thing to look at. But even here, I think we see an artist who knows how to use color to meet the aesthetic needs of the whole.